Bonjour à tous et bienvenue sur ma chaîne. Je suis Rachel et je suis très contente d'être ici avec vous. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I am Rachel and I am very happy to be with you. Before I proceed, I want to apologize for the background noises. It's a weekend. Neighbors are home and there is little or nothing I can do about their clattering sounds. Oh, I wish I could do something about it. I am so sorry. Anyways, this is the third episode of this three-part series, Si Don't If You. In the preceding episodes, we laid a foundation and even went as far as conjugating the verbs that we use in describing ourselves, someone else, or something. I cannot overemphasize how important it is for you to know your personal pronouns and how to conjugate your verbs because that is the crux of getting acquainted or doing any descriptive work. I just cannot overemphasize that enough. Okay, so hoping you've checked out the last video, Sidontifi episode 2, I'll just go ahead with the usage of those verbs. We're not going to waste too much time going over everything. No, please. If you haven't checked it out, please do. And for those who have, well, you know where I'm coming from right now. All right. Today, we'll go straight into practical usage of the verbs, like I said earlier. Let's begin. Now, the way you talk to an elderly person is totally different from the way you talk to a child or a teenager. The way you talk to your boss is totally different from the way you relate with a very close relative, right? So it's the same thing here. If I want to ask someone a question, I have not met this person before, like in my entire life, or this person is older than I am, I will be more polite more polite, I said. The verb sapele can be used as a case in point. Sapele is the verb to be called or known as. Now, I want to ask someone his name. If it's in a formal sense, I say, Comment vous vous appelez? You are called what? In an informal sense, I use the phrase that Almost everyone is conversant with when it comes to speaking French. Come on, tu t'appelles. So here's the difference. In a formal sense, I do not say tu. Instead, I replace it with vous. But in the informal sense, I am permitted to use tu. So let's repeat that again. Come on, vous vous appelez. Or come on, tu t'appelles, as the case may be. Now, when I am replying to someone's question, I need to listen attentively and know who the person is inquiring about. Here's what I mean. If the person is asking me my name, obviously I will not reply with he is or she is. She is called, he is called. I'm going to say I am called, right? Exactly. So I say, je m'appelle Rachel. I am Rachel. I am called Rachel. I am known as Rachel, whichever you please. Then if the person is asking me about the name of someone else, I either use he, she, or they, as the case may be. And so you have, il s'appelle Monsieur Adibada. He is called Mr. Adibada. Elle s'appelle Madame Clément. She is called Mrs. Clement. All right. That's for the verb s'appeler. How about the verb avoir? Avoir is used to talk about your age or things you possess. When using the verb avoir, the same thing applies. In a formal setting, we say, Quel âge avez-vous? How old are you? In an informal setting, I say, Quel âge as-tu? 
How old are you? If I'm replying, I say, J'ai 13 ans. I am 13 years old. If I'm talking about a male, a third person, I say, Il a 60 ans. He is 60 years old. The trick is basically to conjugate the verb properly and reply according to the question asked. However, when asking a question yourself, you should give consideration to the age and position of the person you're speaking to. So you either use vous or tu, as the case may be. Now, let's use another verb to practicalize this. With the verb habite, I talk about where I live, right? Now, I want to ask someone where he lives and I say, Où habite tu? When I say tu, the person is a close friend. The person is someone I know or someone who's younger than me. But if I say, Vous habitez où? Then the person is obviously a stranger or my boss or someone who's older than I am. Vous habitez où or où habites tu? How about the verb to express your nationality? What if I want to ask someone his country? I say, vous êtes Nigerian. Now, here, I just use the proper conjugated form of the verb être and add the nationality. And so, I say, vous êtes Nigerian? Tu es Nigerian? The person might be very outright and says, oui ou non, that's yes or no. However, if the person wants to go a step further, he'll be like, oui. Je suis Nigerian, Nigerian, that's for males, oui, je suis Nigerian, and for females, je suis Nigerian, yes. Or the person could say, non, je suis Togolese, for females. All right, the verb venir. How about a situation where I want to ask the person's state of origin? All I'll say is, d'où viens-tu? Vous venez où? Where do you come from? You are from where? And so, the obvious reply, if someone asks me that question, will be, je viens de l'état de Rivers. I am from River State. I come from River State. Je viens de l'état de Rivers. If I'm speaking about a third party, I say, il vient de l'état d'Imu. Elle vient de l'état d'Anambra. Just like that. Just comme ça. On continue. The verb doteste, to talk about things that you dislike. I want to ask a question using doteste. Here's how it works. Tu détestes les sapons? You dislike snakes. Vous détestez les sapons? The person either replies oui ou non and has the option of completing the sentence. However, if I am talking because the question was directed at me, I say oui, je déteste les sapons. All right. Finally, let's talk about the verb Aimé. Aimé is used to express your likes as against détester, which expresses dislikes. If I want to ask a question using the verb aimé, all I say is, vous aimez les chats? To aim les chats? Do you like cats? Vous aimez les chats? To aim les chats? If I'm replying, I say, j'aime les chats. Oui, j'aime les chats. All you have to do is know the basics. First things first, you look at the person that is addressing you or whom you are addressing. You know the person is either your employer 
or someone you've not met before or someone who's older than you and you use vu. Formal settings, vu. Informal settings, tu. In informal settings, the person is either your junior, age-wise, the person is someone you've met before, someone you know at least, but you're not that close to, and things like that. That's just it. And please know how to conjugate your verbs in the right tense. At this beginning stage, you do not need too much of tenses. The most used, the one which is mostly used, better put, is présent de l'indicative, which is your present tense, right? So please refer to my second episode, S'identifier episode 2, if you want to know how to conjugate these verbs. Now, before I call it quits on the show today, I would love to do some mini work or essay using these descriptive verbs, just to give you a guideline on what to do. Now, sometimes a person might not just ask you one question and then you know that, okay, the person is asking just about my age. Here's what I mean. If the person wants to ask about your age, he'll just go straight to the point and be like, quel âge avez-vous, quel âge as tu But the person might want you to describe yourself without giving you certain areas that he's looking out for. Hence, you have questions like, présentez-vous, présentez-vous, present yourself. Décrivez toi-même en cinq phrases. Describe yourself in five sentences. Hence, you do not have any specific area that you have to reply. You could start anywhere and end anywhere. So I'm going to be describing myself, replying to a question such as présentez-vous. Let's see how that goes. Je m'appelle Mademoiselle Rachel Eke. I am called Miss Rachel Eke. J'ai 60 ans. I am 60 years old. Please don't look at me. <laughs> Je suis Nigériane. I am Nigerian. Je viens de l'état de Rivers. I'm from Rivers State. Mon père s'appelle Monsieur Precious Eke. My father is called Mr. Precious Eke. Il est un ingénieur. He's an engineer. Ma mère s'appelle Madame Anne Eke. My mother is called Mrs. Anne Eke. Elle est une avocate. She is a lawyer. J'ai trois sœurs. I have three sisters. Je suis célibataire sans enfants en ce moment. I am single without children at the moment. J'habite avec ma famille. I live with my family. Nous habitons à numéro 5, rue de Mouma, à Liguta, à Boraco. We live at number 5, on Mouma Street, à Tigruta. Je suis étudiante à l'Université de Rivers. I am a student of River State University. Merci beaucoup. Okay, so let's go over that one more time. But this time, I'm not going to be translating. I'm just going to say it, you know, as it were. I'm just going to say that. So I have, je m'appelle Mademoiselle Rachel Eke. J'ai 60 ans, je suis Nigériane, je viens de l'état de Rivers. Mon père s'appelle Monsieur Precious Eke. Il est un ingénieur. Ma mère s'appelle Madame Anne Eke. Elle est une avocate. J'ai trois sœurs. Je suis célibataire sans enfants en ce moment. J'habite avec ma famille. Nous habitons à numéro 5, rue de Mouma, à Liguta, à Poraco. Je suis étudiante à l'Université de Rivers. Merci beaucoup. So now the person did not tell me what exactly to talk about. I am at liberty to talk about anything. So I 
gave him the basics, talked about my name, my age, my nationality, state of origin, a little detail about my family, what I do, if I'm single or not, where I live, and things like that. When you are writing an essay or a composition or describing yourself orally, you are not limited to using the first person pronoun, you. So it's not compulsory that you say, I, 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 I. It's going to be boring eventually. You can give little details relating to your personal life, your family, as the case may be. And that's why you did not see I or through. Instead, it got to that point where when I was saying I live with my family and then we live at, I said, nous habitons. Instead of jabit, like I live. So it became nous habitons since now my family is in the picture, right? And instead of saying he is an engineer, I could say mon père est ingénieur. I could also say il est ingénieur. So you're not restricted in any way. All you have to do, like I have said repeatedly, is please know your personal pronouns, know how to conjugate your verbs, take into consideration the age or status of the person you're speaking to, and please, please and please again, do not forget to reply according to the question asked. If you're asked about yourself, do not reply with he or she. Reply in first person pronoun. And if you're asked a question using sapele, try to use that verb sapele in replying. For example, somebody says, come on to tapel. I'm supposed to say jumapel. I am not supposed to say, je suis Rachel. There are two different things, please. So if somebody uses a verb, s'appelle, reply using that same verb. I don't know if that's clear enough. I wish I could break that down better. But let's just repeat that example. If someone asks a question using a particular verb, while replying, reply using that verb. That's what I mean. So don't say, je suis Rachel, when the person asks you a question using s'appelé. It's wrong. Nobody's going to force you. Nobody's going to restrict you. But then, when you speak, people are like, are you sure that he or she knows what he is speaking? That's going to be the reaction. So if somebody says something using a particular verb, while replying or giving a comment, please do so using that same verb. Thank you very much for stopping by. Don't forget to hit the like button, drop a comment, and subscribe if you haven't. Merci beaucoup. And since I hope to see you soon, à bientôt.